Hi there. It's Sue, and thanks for joining me for Tips and Talk Day. These are bite-sized topics that I pull from community questions and things that I'm observing in the world of handmade small business. If you'd like to submit a topic, DM me over on Instagram at giftbizunwrapped. Gosh, this year I've rolled out a number of new opportunities for you here. There are the bashes, where you have a chance to showcase your business to this entire listening audience. There's the new Owl app, when you have a quick question where you'd like my input. And now, I'm excited to bring you Gift Biz Boosts. Think of these as free strategy sessions, leaving you with a clear action plan to boost you forward. Whether you're at the beginning of your business journey and need concrete steps on how to start, or you've been doing this for a while and could use a fresh approach, these boosts are for you. You'll know a podcast is a boost if you see that word in the title. Want to get your own free boost? I'm taking these on a first-come, first-served basis. Head over to giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash boost and sign up for your session today. Hey, hey, perfect timing. Football season is upon us. This cheerleading thing probably comes as no surprise to you if you've been hanging out with me for a while. I'm an eternal optimist. I love to cheer people on. I'm okay with attention. And I love football. My entrance into professional cheerleading was prompted by my lack of excitement for my career situation. Right after college, I worked at an advertising agency in downtown Chicago starting at the bottom and determined to rise up those ranks. While I picked up a lot of great learning by observation, my tasks were mundane and unchallenging. I knew my stint there would be short-lived by my own choosing, but I wanted to put in the time and get what I could out of it. So really, this cheerleading idea was to add some spice to my life, because my slow career start wasn't cutting it. The possibility of making a spot on the Chicago Bears cheerleading team was a long shot, I admit it, but who cares? My parents were the only ones who really knew about it since I was still living at home, newly out of college and all. They'd always supported me in the past, but I could tell they were uncertain about this plan of mine. No parent wants to see their child hurt or disappointed, but my attitude was, so what if I don't make it? It's worth a try anyway. I made the first cut, then the second, only one more to go. This really got my parents nervous because they knew my hopes were rising too. I was beginning to believe that maybe I could make the squad. The pinnacle of my cheerleading career. It would be really fulfilling to reach the top of that cheerleading pyramid, as I saw it anyway. I tried to play it cool, but clearly I wasn't. The final day of tryouts, I was so nervous that I left my keys in the car and kept it running, by the way, as I walked away for the final tryouts, without even getting a valet pickup ticket. Luckily, my car was still there when I returned hours later. I was lucky in another way that day, too. I made the team. It was pretty surreal with all the TV cameras, interviews, and the new team photos highlighting the quote-unquote new girls. Had I doubted my abilities or been afraid of taking the chance, I would never have tried out at all. Learning number one, to accomplish anything, you need to put yourself out there. You need to take the chance. I'll tell you more about my time with the Chicago Bears later. But let me back up to the beginning, because as I reflect, my learnings started there. As a child, my time was spent taking piano and violin lessons. My mom, not so secretly, wanted me to be first violin in the Chicago Symphony, a passion I didn't share. Somewhere along the way, one of my teachers said I had musical talent that should be pursued. Because of my mom's interest, I was accepted into a violin focus study at Northwestern University. I was nine at the time, mind you. Included in my program was an hour of music theory, 
an hour of quartet practice, one hour in solo lessons, not to mention daily hour practices every single day of the week. That, along with schoolwork, didn't leave much time for me to expand my horizons, to try other things. This story could go on and on, so I'm going to cut it off here and jump straight to learning number two. Just because you're good at something doesn't mean you have the passion to invest a majority of your life to it. I love my mom, but one of the happiest days of my youth was finally breaking free of music, which didn't completely happen until I was a junior in high school. And I'll say a connected learning here is don't force your passion onto someone else if it doesn't resonate with them. Now, to pacify me, my mom did let me take acrobatics at the local park district. I loved the challenge of working hard at a new trick, pushing past the fear of getting hurt and finally conquering it. Aerials, flip-flops, all of that was so fun and rewarding. But not in the beginning. It took weeks for me to actually do some of the tricks, much less perfect them. Learning number three, You aren't good at things right from the start, although that development and expertise will click in. My cheerleading experience started at the early age of 10. Early for those times, anyway. There were no cheerleading camps or competitions back then like there are today. These were the days when you fought with your siblings over who could use the house phone. In one of my hours-long chats with my dear friend Patty, She asked me a life-changing question. Sue, can you do the splits? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, all versions. I was in acrobatics, remember? Upon confirmation, she explained that she was forming a cheerleading squad for the fifth grade and asked if I wanted to be on it. Yes, of course. This was a life-changing question because it led to so many other things that happened in my life after that. New friendships and learning how to perform in front of a crowd are but two wonderful outcomes of my saying yes to cheerleading. Learning number four, jump on opportunities when they spring up. And five, it is truly who you know. I knew Patty. She knew me. And the offer was made. My cheerleading career was launched. It would be nice to say that it was all smooth sailing from there, but I hit a major road bump in seventh grade. In middle school, that was the start of having to try out for cheerleading teams. Much to everyone's surprise, I didn't make it. In fact, I was the very next one on the list. Devastated is an understatement. All my friends were on the squad, and you know how it is in your teen years, Friends are everything. Not only was it embarrassing, I was afraid I'd lose the closeness that we had established because I'd no longer be spending hours with them at practice and the games. To my good fortune, I was offered the job as manager. Not my favorite thing, but at least a way to stay involved. It was hard, though, I have to say. Seeing my friends in their uniforms on Fridays and being with them, but not if that makes any sense. Plus, I just loved the cheering part. This part of my journey ended well, though. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say that. (laughs) One of the girls, my dear friend, got hurt and had to sit out the rest of the year. Since I was next in line, halfway through the season, I was on that basketball court cheering again. In those days, you cheered for both football and basketball. Learning number six, work through setbacks and swallow your pride if you have to in pursuit of your goals. I'm happy to say that from here on out, I made every team I tried out for. But due to the experience of not making the team, I never took for granted that a spot would be mine. I worked hard before every tryout, stayed humble when my name was on the list, and lifted up those who had their heart set and didn't make it. I knew how it felt. I'd been there. Learning number seven. The work doesn't end when an achievement is reached. 
You must continue to put in the energy to stay where you are and even more to advance. And learning number eight, don't ever get so overly confident in your position or expect the same results time after time. They're not guaranteed. I cheered all the way through high school and put myself out there again in college. That was a scary proposition because it's a level up. I was an unknown amongst everyone else, so my chances of claiming a spot dropped back to neutral. At least in my prior years, I had a track record going for me. To my great fortune, I made it. Eastern Illinois Pink Panthers, here I come. At the university level, it's different. Again, new friendships were formed, and my love of cheering was still there. Something else came to the forefront then, too. My interest in leading the team. Being a captain. Actually, there were always two of us, co-captains. Being in charge. Having responsibility over actions of others. Learning to manage and work through interpersonal issues were all skills that I learned then that served me well in my professional world. I was a co-captain for three years, so had plenty of time to do things wrong, perfect my ways, and test my leadership capabilities. That leads to learning number nine. Observing the role you naturally gravitate to in group settings could lead to new opportunities that you may not have considered before. And finally, let's get back to the Chicago Bears experience. This is the big leagues, right? The golden nugget, the pinnacle of success. Okay, true. And I did enjoy my time on the squad. There were nuances of being on a professional squad that were fun way more upscale and sophisticated dance choreography, which I found really challenging and exciting. It stretched my limits. Being in the limelight and being asked for autographs and recognized on the street gave me a peek into being a celebrity on a small level. Didn't feel comfortable with that at all. Too much recognition is a little unsettling to me. I will say that being on the field and the energy that you only understand if you're there was unbelievable. The impact of pads on pads is really intense when you're close up to the action. And our locker room at Soldier Field was right across the hall from the opposing team. So running out onto the field with them was so exciting. Their size and strength was incredible. Here we are, these small girls moving alongside these massive beasts. (laughs) And I say that in only a good way. These were experiences I am so happy to have had. And then there was the business end of being an NFL cheerleader. No fraternizing with the players because they have a much bigger job to do, of course. The rules, the unhealthy girl competitive drama and the safety concerns that I hadn't expected. This comes with the big leagues of any profession, I guess, but it's the first time I encountered it. Which leads to the biggest learning I want to tell you I discovered in my cheerleading journey. The farther along I progressed, the more complicated and less fun it was. My grade school, middle school, and high school years of cheerleading were the best. College was fun, too but it didn't have the same feel as before. And being an NFL cheerleader was also fun, but truly a job, one that I didn't control. Do I regret doing it? Not for a second. (laughs) My pom-poms still sit in my basement. And how many decades later is this? And it's also really helped me to understand something super important. Learning number 10. The value is in the journey. It's not only discovered when you reach the destination. No matter where you are today in your handmade product business experience, please take the time to reflect and bring joy to each stage. It's not necessary to rush to get to the next level and do a happiness check along the way. Unlike my final stop with the Chicago Bears, where I had no control over the demands we were required to live up to, you have complete control over your business experience. 
Check in with yourself regularly and make sure it feels right, that you're still excited about the possibilities. And if not, make some changes. That's the true beauty of owning your own business. There's reward at each step along the way. And enjoying it all is the key to fulfillment and joy in your journey. That's a wrap. I'm a get-to-the-point kind of girl, and this is what you can expect from these quick midweek sessions. Now it's your turn. Go out and fulfill that dream of yours. Share your handmade products with us. We want them, and they bring us both so much happiness. Oh,